Al Islam raging. They're worried still about whether they could buy a bag. All they know is how much the bag costs. Dolce and Cabana and this and that. I happen to enjoy the street. Don't get me wrong. I like to see stupidity in action. It doesn't make me into a rebel. A rebel, or I mean, I don't think become radicalized because I see stupid people shopping for idiot goods that cost too much. It doesn't make me angry. It make I laugh at them. I'm an American. I was raised properly. I laugh at the morons. I don't want to hurt them. Just what they do alone is hurting them. But I don't know which which uh, visitors now are the worst. I'm going to go there. I think after the show, <clears throat> report to you tomorrow since I'm reporting live from Beverly Thrills, California again. Which of the tourists are the stupidest now? I saw a lot of Italians last time. I would have thought more of them. No, but it, they weren't the dominant. You had a lot of Chinese for a while. They were in here. They liked the... Uh, I was in a Lamborghini showroom the other day. A idiot car. Moron car. Ten-year-old boys like it. Ten-year-old boys and basketball stars like the Lamborghini. A moron car. I don't know what anyone would want it for. Looks like a clown car that costs $500,000. What's the point of that? Oh, you need the car. Okay, you need the Lamborghini. You need the Lamborghini to pull up to, to the uh, restaurant to look. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at him. Wow, look at that. Mm, that's really so. What a car. Oh, look at the car. 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 I'm driving a white Jeep down here. Anonymous. Or I shouldn't have said that. Actually, it's not a white Jeep, but I'm driving something like that. What do you need to show off in a car for? If you have a career where you're great at it, what do you need to show off in a, with a car for? If you're a moron, you need a fancy a, a fancy car. I have them, too. So I guess some days I'm ironic. I need a fancy car. But I'm, in, I'm embarrassed in them now. They don't even ride any better. My, my 08 Mercedes S600 is still my best car. I, I don't want to sell it. I don't want to trade it for a new one. The metal, the gauge of metal is lighter on it. I think they cut back Stuttgart. Stuttgart cut back on the grade of aluminum that they're using. It's too much carbon fiber. The cars are light. My car feels like a tank. Just had it buffed. I'm like one of those guys are getting an old guy in an old Mercedes. It's almost a stereotype. Not good. You saw a lot of them in Hollywood years ago. That was not good. It meant that they were down on their luck. That's the problem. They were like directors who were big in the 80s, 90s, right? Then they haven't gotten any big parts. They're still living on like residuals. And they still have the old house in Beverly Hills. that's never been renovated. It's very dark. They never put a light on. I mean, really, I know this scene so well. You could see the houses are dark even at Christmas. Not a Hanukkah candle, nothing. They can't put a bulb on. They bought it in like 1979. They paid 300 grand for it. So let's say it's worth allegedly six million dollars today. No lights are on. It's depressing, mildy. Smells, smells moldy. And then they drive like an older luxury car, which doesn't have so much as a nick in it, right? But you're supposed to think that they are driving the older car because they really like it. Because it's better than the new ones, but they really can't afford the new one. If they could, they'd buy a new Bentley. That, this is the thing is you have to look through these things. And that's the conundrum I'm in. I drive the older car because I really like it, but people probably think I can't afford a new one. This is my problem. This is the problem when you know a lot of things and you can analyze properly. It's very hard to figure out what to do. So what you do is you get handlers. They tell you what to do. All right, a little bit more on the makeup. Yeah, yeah, pick up the neck. Yeah, do the hair that way. I'm just letting my hair grow. I look like Einstein now. I'm going full Einstein with the with the uh, the postcard Einstein. My family's terrified of the long hair. They hadn't seen me in months. They don't know what happened to me. I'm starting to look like a guy with the black fingernails. What's his name? Who lived in the top of the of the uh, Hilton Hotel in Las Vegas? The guy with the super goose airplane. You know who I'm talking about. They found him and killed. I don't remember his name, but he also with the hair and the nails. You got to be very careful. I'm reluctant to cut it off. I like it. I don't like it. It's another thing. It's like the car, no car, new car, older car. So the whole thing in California, especially in Beverly Hills, is seeing things as they really are, which is what I like to deliver to you. But tonight, I promise you, after the show, I will go down to the main shopping district, and I will report diligently tomorrow as to which group of foreign visitors is the biggest moronic group, which one of the most uh, Thorsten Veblen-esque, for those of you who went to college when I did. A long time ago when Veblen was still being taught. Today, if you say Veblen, they think it's a bad brandy. Thorsten Veblen. I remember when I read that, when I first read that in social sciences in, in college. It must have been a thousand years ago. Thorsten Veblen. I think he wrote about conspicuous consumption. I'd never heard the word before. Because I grew up poor. There's no such thing as conspicuous consumption. To us, it was just consumption. <laughs> it was nothing conspicuous about our consumption. Donald Trump lived on the other side of the Union Turnpike. 
they had conspicuous consumption because his father was a wealthy landlord, a uh, builder. They could have conspicuous consumption. A limo and a driver. I couldn't. I, my conspicuous consumption was wearing galoshes on the Q44A. If I could afford galoshes, I'd walk through the slush. It got so deep sometimes in those, they'd go over your boot and you come up with a wet foot. I'm, I'm now I'm pulling your leg a little bit. I'm having fun. It's all true, but you know it's fun. You know, I love guys that are getting a kick out of this. They got nothing to do. They're bored out of their minds. A lot of guys are listening in New York. They, they're retired. They know what's going on. They need a little comic relief. They think it's all a joke. It is not. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. There's more propaganda every day. The left-wing propaganda machine is worse than Goebbels. Hillary and Obama are the most admired people in the world, according to Gallup. Tell me the last time Gallup's poll was accurate. Gallup is an extension of the Democrat Party. It's owned by the Democrat Party. Lock, stock, and barrel. Hillary Clinton and President Barack Obama have been named the most admired woman and man worldwide by Americans in a Gallup poll Monday, where Donald Trump and Pope Francis tied for second. You actually believe this? Do you actually believe a word that the Gallup poll produces? The Gallup poll. When were they last reliable? When Edward R. Murrow was alive? Gallup poll. The Clintons own everything. The entire propaganda enterprise. Yeah, you talk about uh, Star Wars. This is the starship, propag the starship propaganda here. So I'm telling you about the war. We're losing the war. I'm telling you Obama's not playing the war right or he's playing for the other side. We know this. Everyone who has a brain knows it. We tell you that all the generals and the brave people inside the military command structures know what's going on, and none of them have the courage to speak out while they're still active duty. Then suddenly, when they have the full pension, they're on MSN. They're already a. Uh, they're on MSNBC or uh, Fox News as a contributor. And then suddenly, they're speaking out. So the calls I haven't come. I have tons. Of, I haven't taken a call. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how are you, Blue Monday? Start to work, plan to sleep all deep. Here come Tuesday. Here comes Tuesday. Here comes Tuesday. Well, you've been listening for two hours. You got your money's worth already. But there's another hour to go, by the way, in the Savage Nation. So here's another little story for you. Japan, wary of outsiders, keeps doors closed to refugees. <laughs> I guess no one calls Japan a racist nation, huh? Well, you crybaby liberals. How come you have nothing to say about Japan? They don't want to let in Muslims? They let in 11 last year. Of the 7,533 people applied for refugee status in 2014 into Japan, only 11 were approved. I guess the Japanese um, like Japan for the Japanese. I guess they like their traditions, their culture. I guess the Japanese like the language of Japan. They like borders, language, and culture. How come your liberals aren't screaming the Japanese are all uh, racists? Because they're not. They're called survivalists. You... I can't do it. Certain things I cannot do on radio. Japan, wary of outsiders, keeps doors closed to refugees. Elaine Kurtenbach and Mary Yamaguchi, Associated Press. Oh, if I had the power, what I would do to the Associated Press. Goebbels in the docket. Goebbels in the docket got what they should get for what they've done to the Western world. Okay. Obama's ominous final year. I'll squeeze every ounce of change I can. Willie. Wouldn't it be nice if finally they caught him, put him in jail? Imagine how, what a, a sense of liberation it would be in this country. It would be like VE Day. If they finally, if you saw him marched out in, in handcuffs from the White House by federal marshals, that they finally got him dead to rights on something, what freedom would you say? Freedom would ring. Trump in tie with Pope for second most admired man in America. Okay, great. I pay a lot of attention to that. Pope now. What they lump him in with the Pope for? 
the Marxist commie pope they put him in with. Unhinged U.S. media desperate to stop surging Trump, says Pravda. Can't, can't count that as a Russian can Peter King says, Musk surveillance needed. That's where the threat is coming from. Ooh, Congressman Peter King stepping out. King said civil libertarians can cry all they want. Good for you. This guy's been all over the map. He used to be hardcore. Then he became like a wishy-washy nut. Then a warmongering idiot. Now all of a sudden he's starting to make sense again. Guess the titration was... The psychiatrist got the titration right finally. It took a couple of years. You know, that stuff's hard to use, whatever. They, the hardest one, I'm not saying he's on anything, but the hardest one to titrate correctly, as I understand it, is, uh, is that, that metal. I always forget the one that causes the white spittle on the side of the mouth, the giveaway, the old line antidepressant, antipsychotic. Uh, the Secretary of State, the Madeleine uh, Brisket, had a guy who worked for her for a while. He used to show white on the mouth as he foamed with happiness as Bill Clinton bombed Serbia into the Stone Age, blew up every bridge in the Danube River. This guy used to, to get on television, the, sp the white spittle on the side of the mouth. What's that metal? Uh, I found out that's what causes it. Librium, li lithium, 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 lithium. It's a mood stabilizer. If you eat a lot of brisket, you don't need mood stabilizer. You're just stupefied all the time. You go to the garment center, you come home, wife stupefies you with brisket. You sit quietly while she debates, she debases you in the, on the, in the couch, like you didn't earn, earn enough money, you aren't making enough money. You sit there and you take it, you fall asleep, you take a, you're allowed one drink before she goes crazy. Then he goes to sleep, he gets up at five in the morning to avoid her. Goes into the garment center, he works, he, the poor man, he works 16 hours a day, look at that, he, to, to get away from her. Cause he knows the minute he walks through the door, she's gonna put him down. What were you doing all day and do you think I don't know? What would you do if you were him? The men, I don't know how they took it in that. That's why they ate brisket. They wanted to die young. <laughs> what I just ate in Beverly Hills, that's what they ate every day. Horrible food. Terrible. I ate crawlies. I never ate that stuff. But I was like, I was full of anxiety for the new show, new studio in Beverly Hills. So I sent the maid out for like, just go to the deli. Get me a crawlies. What do you want? Get me a Greek salad and a crawlies sandwich. That's all. I ate it. It wasn't that bad. All right, so what is it? It's lean meat with salt in it, pickled, brinish. Corned beef, not my favorite food. I'm eating so much salt here, though. Ever last night, Japanese, and now the deli. What am I going to do with this f food? Food madness in America. The choices that we have. My ancestors starved to death. They lived. They, they were healthier. They looked thinner. They were on their. They were on a starvation diet. They didn't need to go to a gym. No, you go to a new, a new house. Hard to adjust, no matter how nice it is. The bed could cost a million dollars. The mattress is wrong, right? The cover of the sheet's not right. The right thread count, how spoiled we are. So the first night, yeah, I got to tell you, this was funny. I got myself to sleep. It's like, I'm, I'm a creature of habit. I like my own bed, my own blanket, my own pillow, the dog on the, that's it. The window, the door's open a certain amount of air. You know, certain way, I sleep like a baby. So now I'm in a new house, and everything's wrong. The mattress is still out gassing nine months later. I don't know where they made it. The guy should be ex executed who made this mattress somewhere in China. I don't know what it is. They outgassed for like years. Well, he was like toxic fill. The mattress must have cost as much as a Chevrolet did in my day. It's still outgassing. I told I complained about it six months ago. Still outgassing. It's like rubber coming out of the, out of the mattress. Can't, what do you think people get cancer from all this stuff? These chemicals around us. You think I'm nuts? I'm going to study this for years. That was number one, the outgassing job. I said, all right, stop it. Number two, the sheet and the blanket didn't put this. The, so finally, late, I said to myself, Michael, come on, cut the garbage. You're strong as, as, as I am. Cut it out. I said, I want you to think about two things. Think about a special forces operative right now somewhere in a swamp or in Syria somewhere freezing his butt off on a mountaintop so he can kill an enemy. That's number one. He's sleeping on a rock. That, if that doesn't work for you, think of your own ancestors who slept on clay ovens in Russia because there was no heat. I fell asleep like a baby, woke up at dawn. You see, you have to talk yourself off certain things to put things in context. That's why when I see that we're not winning the war against ISIS, I'm not really that worried. Because we will get a president who will destroy them. He will pound them into garbage. He will destroy them like the gonorrhea that they are. He will be the strongest antibiotic ever invented. He will annihilate them like the gonorrhea bacillus that they are. They're not incurable. We just need a better doctor. Obama's like a drunk doctor 
who doesn't know what medicine to use, and when he uses it, he uses it wrongly. Obama is like a 